we don't have to allow culture to impact our view of Jesus. It equates this specific topic to sin. I think it sounds crazy when you don't consider who it is that's saying it. If you muck around with your understanding of marriage, you muck around with the gospel. Because here's the truth. God designed sexual intimacy to be expressed in marriage between one man and one woman. And anything outside of that box, God actually calls it a sin. I wanted people to tell me that I'm something, that I'm significant and women became one of the main sources of that. I was beginning to form a deep attachment to guys rather than to girls. My brother, now my sister, is really suffering. And I did not know that, and I did not have clues. My parents divorced, and both of them went into same-sex relationships. But at the same time, I also knew that it was not compatible with how one should live as a Christian. So some people might not even know that there are other Christians who are facing these issues but seeking to live faithfully for Christ. If I am able to love Carly in a way that is pleasing to the Lord, that's the track I want to be on. I remember this one particular pride parade. There were all of these Christians bringing water and urine over everyone. And my mom said, well, Caleb, Christians hate gay people. Some people have used these verses to condemn people, to even manipulate people. To be called a pedophile, to be called a sexual deviant on a daily basis, it wears on you. I mean, it's no wonder kids kill themselves all the time. That's just not okay. When you follow Jesus, you give up your rights to use your theological convictions to devalue the grace that God is offering them. If your truth is not gracious, it's not real truth. Homosexuality isn't a political issue, it's a people issue. What is their name? Who are they? What do they like to do? What do they enjoy? Who is their family? Where were they raised? Nobody bothers to tell them about the love of God in Christ, but instead they see these people who would rather than die. We've abstracted it out from the context of the gospel. How about I give them the same hope that I rest in every day? As much as I can learn about what she's going through, the better Christian I will be. What would it look like in our communities, in our relationships, if we were people who valued messy grace? Because God loves messy people, so should we.